This is it, boys. This is the last time we're gonna see this thing stock body. I'm still geeking that this is happening. Like, I never actually thought this would happen, and I just wanted to document the car before we did all this stuff because I think the car's in a really cool state right now. A lot of the stuff I did myself, and it's just like really clean, really simple, narrow body BRZ. And to me, this was like my dream for like just a narrow body BRZ. This is all I ever wanted. Shit, we got traffic coming both ways. Oh, damn. Oh, no. You'll fit, you'll fit, you'll fit. Thank you. And this guy, yeah, he didn't even care. Nope. He knew he was gonna fit. This made me happy. But not as happy as this karma kit's about to make me. And it's about time to, because things keep breaking, things keep happening. I literally feel like this car's just taking a beating just to like get me ready for the fact that I'm about to have to cut it up. It's not every day you can just drive your car around and confidently know that in about an hour, I'm gonna take a grinder to that thing and it's never gonna be the same. So you guys know how this one goes. Full send or no send, baby. But something with full sending this one is just a lot less stressful. Like I cut that thing up into a million pieces and I don't even care if I mess it up. I just like, it doesn't, it's not even a thought in my mind. Like what if this goes wrong? I don't care. But something about doing the same process to this car has had me sweating all morning. Like I am so nervous. And honestly, I don't know why. Cause like, I know I'm, I'm confident in doing it. I think it's just, I know that this car is worth a lot more than the Civic is. I just really don't want to pooch it. So for those of you guys that are not caught up to speed, yesterday we fully unboxed the brand new Karma Wide Body Kit, came all the way from Indonesia, but yours won't. Yours will come all the way from Canada. Which is really cool for me to say because nothing I ever get is from Canada. So a company named DSG Performance is the exclusive provider for Karma Wide Body Kits as of right now. And something really cool they're doing is you can go on there and you can package it with the exhaust, which I have. And I'm telling you guys I wanna get a lot of stuff carbon fiber overlaid. Like I wanna get all the side skirts and like this little rear dress up piece in the bumper and that whole front piece in the front bumper, I wanna get all that carbon overlaid. And they have an option where when you buy the kit, you can also get it with the carbon. We're just doing this a little bit differently. We're, we're kind of on a little bit of a time crunch, so I don't know if we'll get the carbon done now or in like a month or two, but we will be getting this stuff carbon overlaid. I think my only real task for this kit is how I'm gonna mount it. Because I kind of misspoke yesterday. I said that it's meant to be two-way taped on. It's not meant to be two-way taped per se. It's meant to be molded. This kit is meant to be like what we did with the first wide body on the Civic, like with the wish fenders. You're meant to like put this on there and then put like a, a seam sealer or some kind of like adhesive right across it and literally make it one with the car, which is really cool. It looks very nice, but my fear is anything happens to my car and the thing is molded to the car, it's gonna be a lot of work to replace it. Whereas if I can find a way to bolt it up, because it doesn't have any like rivet holes or anything on these ones. They're very clean, they look really nice when they're up there. So if I can find a way to get it on there like that, then even though I really, really hope nothing ever happens, but if it were to happen, I will be able to replace it. Or if I want to change it up, or if they make another version of the kit, anything, I will have the option to take the kit back off. I don't really, especially with this car, I do not want to be stranded with just whatever I've already done. So hey, I love you. I'm sorry I'm about to cut you up. Thank you for breaking necks as a narrow body, but baby, let's make you a wide body. You know what would go really nicely right there? A lift. So a lot of you 86 guys have like that always on uh, module you can get where this thing's just always on when you're running. It's like your daytime running light. But something that I'm gonna try and do once this is all said and done is we're not gonna have those running lights anymore. The little daytime straight pieces. Which means there will be a wire in here that's leading to nowhere that's giving an on signal when the e-brake is down. So what I'm gonna try and do is just cross wire those. That way this thing is on 24 seven without me having to do the lights. Cause if you guys notice, any of my driving clips, I always have like full interior lights on and that's because every time I get in the car, I crank it into like the first light position. That way my D lights come on and my daytime running lights come on because I think that looks way better. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that. I don't know if there's like tutorials on that, but I'm definitely gonna have to give that a go once we get started. I already took the license plate relocator off, which was a good idea because it, it would have gone right into the, like, the worst place ever. It was literally located right here, so it, you, you wouldn't be able to use it. It also looks like you pretty much have to take off everything under this crash beam, and honestly, I will probably either paint this black or like get like a, like a bash bar or something that's a little bit less noticeable. So cool. And for anybody that doesn't know, it looks funny with this being the same color. Trust me, go to Karma's Instagram, look at the photos of people that have this with a carbon overlay, you will instantly change your mind if you think this looks weird. Hey buddy, you brought pizzas? Hell yeah, brother. That looks so sick. I got the front bumper halfway on. Man, this looks so sick. I'm excited. We're gonna start a pile of Subaru parts now. We have 240 stuff here. 
We have S10 stuff here. And then everything over here, oh well, all the garbage that's not in boxes, that's Civic stuff. So what I need to do is buy another car and then build like a shelf up here for other car stuff. And then we can just, you can come move in and we can build your shelf up there for your That'd car That'd be ideal. That fits so nicely though. Yo, that lines up so good. Like that's actually so good. And then all you would need to do is just like put a, some kind of hardware piece through this. The body line look, lines it up good. Gets cut off. Oh yeah. And it still lines up good. See the body lines so well on the camera. Can you? Yeah. Like these ones? Yeah. That's what I mean. They they are really cool. Are you excited to cut these fenders? Honestly, I'm really scared. I am too, man. I'm so scared. I've never cut up mint fenders before. I'm gonna put just like a couple hardware pieces in here. No, this thing's gonna go way back because does not that, that part have to tuck in or does it just line up on it? Oh yeah, it does tuck in. I'm just trying to find where it all goes. See, what's hard is like this not being cut. It puts so much tension on it. Yeah, so we don't really know. Yeah. Like it, it looks like it's gonna be something like that. Can't get that in without cutting it. We just start cutting. Is that how we're gonna make it fit? Is this just a full send or no send situation? We just cut. That's freaking loose. This piece wants to be on the ground. Send her home. Full send or no send, baby. I got a little excited at first, and I accidentally didn't follow the line. So we might have to come back at this one and cut it a little bit. I was just looking at the tape, cutting by the tape, but I didn't realize over here we were supposed to cut higher. I don't know if it'll matter. But like, dude, this requires a lot of cutting compared to like a rocket bunny. Yeah. Like this is, <laughs> look at the gap here, dude. This thing has to come all the way back because of the way this fender kind of like rolls in. I still am kind of nervous, but I'm also fired up. And so I think like our best move is to just put it on, tape it with like duct tape so it doesn't come off. And then we're gonna wanna like m come in through the back and mark where we're gonna put the hardware and stuff. So let's just try and make it fit. Dude, that looks so good. Essentially with the Karma instructions, you get to this point, and then you're gonna run some kind of uh, like adhesive sealant something in here to kind of bind this to the car and then it will never come off. My issue with that is that the bumper needs to come off if I wanna do like when we, when we boost it, I need to take the bumper off. So this can't be molded to that. Looks really good. It looks good. Okay, so this piece should line up at the bottom of this. So like the whole wheel well was extended back. Just yeah. torqued it too much, it's just gotta sit like this. But like the rest of it lines up pretty good. Seems solid to me. Yeah. We just need to figure out how we're gonna mount it. Yeah, you're probably gonna have to go up and 3M tape the whole thing. 3M tape and then you can put a screw there. So this one will get two-way tape, but it also have bolts coming up to the bottom probably. Some people have gotten away with leaving the front one, but in the thing I saw, like it's gotta go. 100%. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, one of the things that you guys yell at me for the most, but one of my absolute favorite things that I did to this car when I did the diffuser was putting this light bar as my reverse light. And it's also gonna work out nicely because the new reverse light I got has the wires, and this end has already been snipped and pronged and ready to go. So I kind of played myself, the car's a little bit far back because I was originally thinking well, we won't be able to get the rear bumper on without putting the exhaust, and I was gonna save that for like a separate video so we could kind of compare the exhaust. But then as we're going along, kind of like everything has to be on with everything in order to make sure it all fits right. Like this fender has to line up down here with the side screw, but it also has to line up with the front bumper. And then we're gonna we're coming into the same thing in the rear where they need to line up with both. So I guess I'm gonna have to slap the rear bumper on today, which is still okay. It just the exhaust will be kind of weird coming through it. So we're gonna tape up the entire kit, and then once we see that everything is perfectly lined up, 
Then we'll go ahead and start drilling from the inside and making our holes and lines and everything. Cause this one's not as easy. Like with the Civic kit, there's all the holes for all the hardware. So you literally just get it to this point taped up and then you just start drilling and then you just install it and you're good to go. If you look at like this rear quarter before we cut it, you can kind of see like how much wider the front one is pretty gnarly something about living in canada and having had this exhaust for about three years now all the hardware is completely rusted and disgusting so i'm not really trying to just take off pieces at the end i'm trying to take off the whole thing that way if somebody wants it if someone wants to put it on their car i could just kind of sell it as like a whole piece because as soon as you start taking it apart like you're gonna need to replace gaskets and hardware the whole time where like they're still good it's just like once you take them apart they're completely trash so I'm trying to take that all off as one and I'm trying to do that in its own video so we can kind of compare exhausts and just have fun with it. So I'm actually gonna do right now is take advantage of the fact that this comes apart. I'm just gonna take all these bolts off, hang just like the bumper cut out. We can get the bumper on and then we can line everything up and then the day I do the exhaust, I can just swap this piece back in, which should be relatively easy anyways because it's already, everything's pre-drilled and it's like ready to go. And what's kind of cool about this too is like that coming off, I just realized there's like a whole section of people that will take this and just do something really cool and custom with that. I'm actually just gonna slide these temporarily back into just to make sure that everything's lining up right. This just needs a couple bolts to keep this up because it's just gonna keep falling down. And then I seriously see a world because I know people like to mix body kits. Burpee's car and Birdie's car, they're just a mix of different kits. And I'm excited to see this kit get to the point where one day people are just mix matching it with other stuff and it looks really cool and they have something really different going on back there than this piece. Personally, on this kit, the rear end is my favorite. I love the carbon inlay, like that's my absolute favorite part. So I'm excited for my piece, but I'm also excited to see what other people do in the future. Okay, my first real like, I guess issue with this kit, everything was going pretty smooth. It's pretty easy to understand like how everything fits, but this rear part's a little weird. So you guys can kind of see the body line right here on the car. And this sits like pretty close to the body line, which makes sense. I even lowered this side skirt a little bit so it doesn't sit flush with the door. It kind of has this gap. After looking at a couple of the other kits that have been done, it does look like they all kind of carry this gap along the side here, which is fine with me. But of course, then when I'm doing the other side, I go and there's the gas cap thing on there. So this one will only sit in one specific place. And this specific spot to keep it where the gas cap is, is significantly lower than this body line. Um, I don't have the side skirt on this side yet, but that's obviously gonna cause the side skirt to sit way lower. Cause if you look right here, this is like the gap beside that in the door. This is the gap beside that in the door on this side. So this side's obviously way closer. So I'm gonna try and play around with it and see if there's any way, like there's really, there's really no way I can get this side any higher. Like this is pretty much where it's maxed out. <laughs> the hell is that? That's gross. It's not actually that gross, it's just freaky looking. Are you gonna put that same old guy back in? No, I'm gonna go wash it off first. But then you're gonna put him back in? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, yeah, Brad's back and I actually ended up lining this kit up very nicely. I didn't even tell you that Brad left, but I got this thing lined up to what I think is pretty good. So what I ended up doing was just taking off like the side skirt and the front end, like I just took everything off and replaced all of it. So now there's a little bit of a bigger gap here, which kind of sucks. And then what I did was I came over here and adjusted it so that this has the same size gap now, right from the bottom of the window, you got like two fingers. And then on this side, bottom of the window, you got two fingers, so we're good. Oh. Yes, dude, I'm so hyped. Only thing we didn't put on was the duct bill because like I told you guys, if I'm gonna get everything carbon overlaid, I kind of want to leave my carbon fiber duct bill. It's like a little bit bigger and it's actually carbon fiber, which looks dope. And I think it'll look really good, like right above that other carbon. <laughs> you got your contact back in? Hell uh, yeah, right? Do you want to go ahead and cut the backs? Yeah. And then we'll have all four, four, all the, the, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. We got all four cut. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is we'll do exactly what we did on the Civic and we'll do the slices. Yeah. We'll fold it up, but we'll just do a couple tacks. We don't need to weld the whole thing solid. That was kind of pointless when we did it on the Civic. Yeah. We'll do a couple tacks, 
and then we'll just seam seal over all of it. What I think we should do also is we should wait until we bag it. Because if we go ahead and weld all this and seam seal this and then we to go to air out more. and it hits when we air out, I'm yeah. gonna be pissed. So I think what we'll do is we'll just bend it up for now and then you can test it, right? This is so dusty, dude. It's yeah. gross. That's that's just dust. So to do the reverse uh, stuff on this with the yeah. hardware, we're gonna have to go in through the trunk. Ooh, unfortunate. Yeah. Or we would peel this back, but then how are we gonna access it next time, right? Yeah. All right, so we got these rears cut and then we threw the fenders back on. I am gonna call this a pretty good first step because essentially, if you were doing it the way that most other people have done it with this, all you would do is just apply like a resin and you're done. Like we could have been done this today if we're doing it that way, but we want to take our time and we basically want to reverse mount, like inside mount everything. So we did have a couple troubles trying to get things lined up. Everything ended up working out, but we took a little bit longer than we thought it was going to just to get it lined up. We were also being idiots for half the day and we weren't very productive. But it's on and I'm super happy with how it all turned out and I'm very happy that everything is lining up. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do like, I guess part two to this video and we'll actually reverse mount everything. <laughs> It looks so good. Every time I look at it on the camera, it looks so good. I'm just excited for the whole build. Absolutely. Because like Absolutely. we just have like by the time this car is done, it's gonna be unreal. Like we just started. Yeah, like we're we're just getting going right now. These little guys kind of clip in there. I don't want to clip it in because I don't want it to come back out. But I'm thinking I'm gonna try and make this functional because I'm not a big fan of parts that don't do anything. Yeah. So we'll try and make this functional. Take a wheel and throw it on the front just so we can kind of get like a... I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint. My new wheels, the color of them is called transparent gold. So unfortunately, these Audhon wheels didn't have a very long life with this car. We got some pretty nice wheels coming. They're in the color transparent gold. That's all I'm gonna say. And they are so nice. <laughs> it looks so stupid. It's so dinky looking. It's just like super sucked in. If you just get a side jeweler shot, it's cool. Definitely needs... Oh my God, that's how much wider it got. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just look at this? It's crazy. Oh my god. Like your big one before was like pretty good. But I love the look where half of it's missing. Yeah, like the open, I don't know what you call that. I don't know, but you see like a lot of tread. That's why you get tires with like nice tread. Yeah. Because you can get some like ugly tread tires. Yeah, you Like can. you get some ones that are super nice. You get some that's nice to look at and it, it'll stick out essentially as far as this. Yeah. Like right to there. So you'll just see beef. And we're going with a beefy setup. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys like the way it looks so far. I know it's kind of hard to tell without like having any kind of color or contrast to it. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and stay committed. I know there's probably new people here. So if you're still here, first of all, comment duct tape. Second of all, subscribe because that's what you do. You like the video, you stay to the end, you subscribe so you see more. All right, peace out, stay committed.